Now, hi year four, glad you're here. Look what I found, some old papers with some drawings on. I think you might have seen these before. Can you remember what they're called? That's right, I think they're hieroglyphs too. There's quite a few on here though. Would you be able to help me to decode what this says? So here's the message that I found and here's the decoding sheet. Can you pause the video now and work out what it says? So how did you get on? Did you manage to decode the secret message? So it says, my name is Sethos. Help me share my story. Hmm. I wonder if this is the story that I found with the message. But again, it's all in hieroglyphs. I wonder if I work it out, if you would be able to write down the story in English so that we can share it with other people. So, our learning objective today is to write from memory simple sentences dictated by the teacher. Right, you're going to need a pen or pencil and a piece of paper or your home learning book. If you go and get those, then come back to me. Have you got everything? Brilliant, we'll start. So, using my decoder, I think I've managed to work out the first sentence. I'll read it to you a couple of times and then pause the video and write it down. You ready? Many years ago, there was a young boy called Sethos who lived in ancient Egypt. Okay, I'll read it again. Many years ago, there was a young boy called Sethos who lived in ancient Egypt. Pause the video and have a go at writing that one down. Right, sentence two. He lived in a small, dusty house with his father, mother and two sisters. Okay, here it comes again. He lived in a small, dusty house with his father, mother and two sisters. Pause the video again. Sentence three. If he climbed onto the roof of his house, then he could see the pyramids in the distance and the Nile beyond. This one's a little bit longer, so make sure you listen to it carefully. If he climbed onto the roof of his house, then he could see the pyramids in the distance and the Nile beyond. Have a go at writing that one down. Right, on to sentence four. Unfortunately, his older brother had vanished two weeks ago when he went to work transporting grain on the Nile. And again. Unfortunately, his older brother had vanished two weeks ago when he went to work transporting grain on the Nile. Sentence five is quite a long one too, so listen carefully. One scorching, blistering afternoon, the boy decided to set off to find out what had happened to his brother. One scorching, blistering afternoon, the boy decided to set off to find out what had happened to his brother. Sentence six. Remember, when you've listened to it a couple of times, pause the video and then come back to me. Where are you going? Questioned the boy's mother. And again, where are you going? Questioned the boy's mother. Sentence seven. I need to solve this mystery, replied the boy. And again, I need to solve this mystery, replied the boy. Sentence eight. After many exhausting hours, the boy came to the banks of the Nile. After many exhausting hours, the boy came to the banks of the Nile. So this is sentence nine. Puzzled, he sat down to work out what to do next. Puzzled, he sat down to work out what to do next. Sentence 10. As it was getting dark, he saw a light coming towards him, but suddenly, and again, as it was getting dark, he saw a light coming towards him, but suddenly, oh, I'm confused. That seems to be all of the story, but we haven't found out what's happened to Sethos's older brother. Hmm, I wonder if you can help. So here are your chilli challenges for today's lesson. Now, they are a layered approach today, so you start with chilli one and you keep going and see how far you can get. So chilli one, I want you to write down the sentences that I dictated earlier. Chilli two, I want you to re think really carefully where the punctuation should go. Can you identify the correct places? And chilli three, can you help? Can you create your own ending to the story? Remember to use fronted adverbials. Can you tell us what happened to Sethoth's older brother? Don't forget, 
to send your completed stories to the year four email address. I really want to know what happened to him. Okay, now we're ready for the check section. Let's see how you got on with your dictation. So the first sentence uh, says, many years ago, there was a young boy called Sethos who lived in ancient Egypt. So obviously we need to start with a capital letter because it's the start of our sentence. So, many years ago, and then this is a front of adverbial of time because it's telling us when. So we need to remember to include our comma after our fronted adverbial. Many years ago, there was a young boy called Sethos. Again, that's a name, so it needs a capital letter. Now, something for the chilly threes that we have done in school before. This next bit starts, um, starts with who. So that is a relative pronoun, because I'm going to include a relative clause. Now, if you remember the rule, the relative clause always has that comma before it. So who lived in ancient Egypt? Now, Egypt was one of your spelling words last week. So the I sound is spelt with a Y, like Mrs Price talk, taught you about. And then that's the end of our sentence, so we need the full stop. How did you get on with that one? So sentence two said he lived in a small, dusty house with his father, mother and two sisters. So I've just had my full stop, so I need a capital letter. So he lived in a small, dusty house. Hmm, I think I need a comma here. That's because I've got two adjectives, two describing words, and my noun. So I have an expanded noun phrase here, and the rule is that I need a comma in between my two adjectives. So he lived in a small, dusty house with his father. And now I'm coming on to list the people that he lives with. So this is a list sentence, so I need to include commas in between my list. He lived with, uh, in a small dusty house with his father, comma, mother, and two sisters. With a full stop at the end. Sentence three was slightly longer, but this is what it said. If he climbed onto the roof of his house, then he could see the pyramids in the distance and the Nile beyond. So, I've got my full stop, so I know I need to start with a capital letter. If he climbed onto the roof of his house, then the pyramids. Now again, this is one of your spelling words from Mrs Price from last week, where the I sound is spelt with a Y, so pyramids, so P-Y-R-A-M-I-D-S. He could see the pyramids in the distance. And the Nile. Now the Nile is the name of a river, so it needs a capital letter, just as Sethos did. And the Nile beyond. Full stop. Now, I'm just going to check this sentence. If he climbed onto the roof of his house, then he could see the pyramids in the distance and the Nile beyond. Now, I'm taking a pause somewhere in that sentence, so I know that I need to use a comma. Listen again and see if you can find out where. If he climbed onto the roof of his house, then he could see the pyramids in the distance and the Nile beyond. Did you get it? That's right, I need a comma after house. And that is because this first bit, if he climbed onto the roof of his house, is a subordinate clause. 
it started with a subordinate conjunction. So after that clause, I need the comma. It doesn't make sense by itself either. Right, so we're on to sentence four. So this one said, Unfortunately, his older brother had vanished two weeks ago when he went to work transporting grain on the Nile. So let's see how we got on with this one. Again, full stop, so we need a capital letter. Unfortunately, Hopefully you spotted that unfortunately is a fronted adverbial of manner, so we need a comma after our fronted adverbial. Unfortunately, his older brother had vanished two weeks ago. when he went to work transporting grain on the Nile. Capital letter for Nile again. And a full stop at the end. Okay, so sentence five. So this one said, one scorching blistering afternoon, the boy decided to set off to find out what had happened to his brother. So, new sentence, I need a capital letter. One scorching, blistering afternoon. The boy decided to set off to find out what had happened to his brother. That's the end of my sentence, so I need my full stop. I'm just going to check this through now. One scorching, blistering afternoon. Well, we've already had one of these. This is another expanded noun phrase because I've got two adjectives followed by my noun. Scorching, blistering, I need a comma to separate my adjectives there. One scorching, <coughs> blistering afternoon. And I also need a comma after afternoon because this is a fronted adverbial of time. So one scorching, blistering afternoon, the boy decided to set off to find out what had happened to his brother. Full stop. So, sentence six. Now we really need to think back to Miss Murphy's video where she taught us all about inverted commas. So the next sentence said, where are you going? Questioned the boy's mother. So let's see. So we know that the boy's mum is speaking here. So we need inverted commas around the spoken word. And we start with a capital letter. Where are you going? Where are you going? It's a question, so we need that question mark. And remember, it goes inside the inverted commas. Where are you going? Questioned. The boys mother. So we need a full stop at the end. I'm missing one more thing. Did you get it? So the mother belongs to the boy. So we need a singular possessive apostrophe. Where are you going? Question the boy's mother. So for sentence seven, we really need to use Miss Murphy's video again. So it's been really useful today. If you've written it as one long paragraph, just like I have, we need to remember the rule that every time a new person speaks, we start a new line. So even though I've got room here, because the boy is now speaking, I start on a new line. So I need my inverted commas because he says, I need to solve this mystery, replied the boy. So I open my inverted commas. Capital letter, remember. I need to solve 
with this. And again, another spelling word from Mrs. Price where the I sound in mystery is spelt with a Y. This mystery. I need to solve this mystery. A piece of punctuation before I close my inverted commas is needed there. Though he's not, it's not a question, he's not really shouting it, so I don't need an exclamation mark. So I've just used a comma. Replied the boy. Full stop at the end. Right, we're on to sentence eight. After many exhausting hours, the boy came to the banks of the Nile. So, full stop, capital letter. After many exhausting hours and hopefully you spotted that that was another fronted adverbial after many exhausting hours is a fronted adverbial of time so I need that comma after it after many exhausting hours the boy came to the banks of the Nile end for Nile, full stop at the end. Sentence nine. So this one said, puzzled, he sat down to work out what to do next. So full stop, I need to start with capital letter. Puzzled. And hopefully you got a fronted adverbial again. This time it's a fronted adverbial of manner, telling us how he sat down, or well, he was puzzled. Puzzled, comma, he sat down, Uh, to work out what to do next. Full stop. Right, sentence 10, the final sentence. So this one said, as it was getting dark, he saw a light coming towards him, but suddenly. So, start of my sentence, it needs a capital letter. As it was getting dark. As it was getting dark. Now, just like I said earlier, this part of the sentence doesn't make sense by itself. That's because it's a subordinate clause. And I need a comma at the end to mark the end of my clause. As it was getting dark, he saw a light. Or a light coming towards him, but suddenly, and I'm going to end my uh, sentence with an ellipsis. And the noisy punctuation for this is da da da. It leaves our story on the cliffhanger. So, now that we've finished checking all of the sentences that I dictated to you, don't forget this Chili 3 challenge. Create your own ending to the story. What happened to the older brother? What was the light that was coming towards him? Don't forget to use fronted adverbials in your story. I'm going to send a fronted adverbial word map home to your email address so that you can use that in your story writing. Don't forget when you've finished your story to send it through to the Year 4 email address. Can't wait to see your stories.